I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Chevy Blazer. RS all-wheel drive without launch control. It picks up there. Dad fast. So after a couple months, we're finally able to review cars again. In the last couple months, I haven't seen anyone except for my wife without a mask on and the same has gone for Jacob. So we're being extra safe, so we only see each other so we can continue to do these. So let's get into the horsepower and torque. Horsepower and torque. 308 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque from a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. I mean, that's a lot of power, but it doesn't feel like it has that much power, maybe because it's a big SUV. But it feels pretty good in the upper rev range. Like, it kind of keeps pulling. It does, but since this is an RS, I guess it kind of competes with the Edge ST, the Edge ST feels a lot faster than this. Straight line, yeah, I totally agree. So now I also want to introduce the other competitors for this car. Okay, so obviously there's the Ford Edge ST, there's the Honda Passport, the Volkswagen Atlas Crossport, the Hyundai Santa Fe, and kind of the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So we'll talk about that more at the end, but I just want all the viewers to know where this thing sits. And this sits on the actual Acadia platform, which is also shared with the Cadillac XT5. So obviously with me behind the wheel, I'd like to start with the looks. Okay, so first of all, I think this looks like a Camaro. This is the Camaro of <laughs> SUVs. It's like what Lamborghini did with the Urus, except for a Camaro and not nearly as cool as an Urus. Yeah, and people kind of said that this looked like the Urus when it came out, and it kind of does a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the front end. It's got that big Camaro style grille. Even though we haven't reviewed a Camaro, we still know what it looks like. GM, hit us up. Yeah, so the middle of the bumper is all blacked out. There's grills everywhere. Some of them are fake, some of them are real but there's very little body color on the outside. And then we've got a chrome piece between the headlights, but on the RS version, it's blacked out chrome, but on the rest of the trims, it's chrome chrome. This is definitely the best looking version. Yeah, there's a lot of different trims of this and they look terrible in comparison to this RS. Yeah, especially like the way it looks in the grill, like everything kind of bad, but how about the headlights? So I think they did the best job with these headlights of doing the thing that the Jeep Cherokee introduced and now the Hyundai Kona and stuff like that is doing. I think this is the best version of that. The DRLs do look very good at the top. It looks very like, angry and aggressive. Yeah, so if you guys didn't know, the DRLs are up at the top and the actual headlights that shine on the road are at the bottom. Overall front end looks more aggressive than I think it should. Yeah, exactly. I like it, but it's kind of weird for an SUV like this that isn't that fast, but it looks pretty fast from the front. So we move on to the side, we do have a kind of floating roof design. Yeah, and then we have a body line that curves up towards it. I think it looks pretty good. We do have a lot of cool body lines in there. I don't think it's like the best looking SUV, but it's definitely not bad looking. It just looks really angry, like a frowning face from the side. And then also from the side in this trim, the RS, we do have black along the bottoms and around the wheel arches. But in other versions, you'll either get a matte black or you'll get full body colored. I definitely think this is the best style. Yeah, for sure. And then we have really nice looking wheels. These are probably my my favorite types of looking wheels on this kind of SUV. Like they did so much stuff right on this. And what is the Continental recommended tire for the Blazer RS? The Continental Cross Contact LX Sport. And then the rear end, do you like the taillights? They're kind of Camaro and Corvette-esque and I kind of like them. They're forgettable to me. They kind of remind me of the Chevy Cruze we drove those years ago. No, I think they look more like a Corvette-ish. It just kind of blends into like bleh to me. Well, speaking of blending in, what do you think of the exhaust? I mean, it's 2020 real. Yeah, I think they did a pretty good job of it because the metal is actually connected to the circular tip. I don't think GM has figured out a way yet to disguise the tips in a bad way, but yeah, the yeah. second they do. But I think this is better than what BMW is doing with a separate tip that they're disguising. Yeah, yeah, and it's better than the Fords that are throwing the exhaust down even <laughs> though the tip goes out to the back. Exactly, so shout out GM, I guess. <laughs> And then we also have a little diffuser that's black between there. It's kind of not needed, but it's cool, I guess. And then we have a larger part of the diffuser right above it that's like in the bumper. Yeah, yeah, it's like all black. And I guess that blends below where the little panel you can remove for a trailer hitch is. Yeah, so if you have a dog or something like that, I feel like it's gonna get scratched up, even with groceries and stuff like that. And like the whole load floor for the trunk is super high. But it is a super flat load floor, which is really nice for boxes. Box test. Box test. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
Get your own box on patreon.com slash straight pipes. Thank you to all of our patrons. So overall looks pretty good looking. I think it's really good looking. But the rest of the car doesn't really match that. Let me floor it a little bit. Quite a lot of downshift lag. Like it's just kind of like, yeah, kind of. So we're moving on to the interior before you start driving it. It does have the updated infotainment for GM. So we do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's fast, it's smooth, and it's got rewinding satellite radio stations, which is awesome, because now there's a Led Zeppelin channel, and I've been really enjoying that. And we even have really nice 360 and reverse cameras, like really high res. Yeah, I was shocked, because usually, you know, these companies kind of suck, but it's nice because we have a ton of different angles. Like I can see my front wheel, my rear wheel, so I can park without scratching anything. But what sucks is the 360 kind of looking camera. When I look at the front end, it looks like I'm driving a tiny little uh, big wheels or power wheels. What's the, the little car that kids drive? Uh, I think it's called big wheels or, or power, power wheels. Big wheels, I think, is the tricycle with the middle. Yeah. Power, power wheels are the wheels. ones that are like the little cars. I never had either. Me neither. <laughs> my, my parents told me I was too big to get one. <laughs> and then my neighbors who were bigger than me had one, I was like, oh. I think they're just really expensive. <laughs> they, they definitely were. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get one either. And since we've been doing these virtual reviews at home, we went from under 900,000 subs to 950,000 subs, and now we're only 50,000 away from getting to a million subscribers. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching the virtual reviews. This is what we normally do, so consider subscribing to watch more of this. And we do have some hard buttons for the control of the infotainment, like we got a volume knob, we got a left and right tuning, home and a back. And then there's these small buttons here you gotta click if you wanna go to certain screens. And then below that we have hard buttons for all of our climate, which we really appreciate. And then we have really cool looking temperature controls, which you actually just spin the entire vent. Yeah, it's very intuitive, and I love how there's hard buttons for everything because it does still show the digital stuff when you change it, but the hard buttons is the best. Yeah, and then we have a USB-C and a regular USB, and then below that we have wireless charging. So now if we move on to our gauge cluster, we've got an analog tack on the left, some analog stuff on the right, and then digital in the middle. You can change the way it looks, but I love that you've got the big speedo right in the middle. And when the gauges transition, there's not really any lag. Like, the smoothness is really good. I think they took a lot of the stuff that they actually put into the Corvette, which was the stuff that we liked, the lack of lag, and put it in this. And then as for your steering wheel buttons, it's kind of like everything else GM. We've got the left-right buttons that are actually hard, and instead of up and down buttons, we've got an up and down scroll wheel which I always accidentally click the hard plastic and it does nothing. Yes, <laughs> I've had that same issue in this car and every other car. And besides that up here, everything's pretty intuitive. It is kind of weird to have a glove box button instead of like a button for the glove box on the glove box. But that's GM style, so. And what I really like is these vents that do have a red outline around them, which is nice. You twist them and you can like fully see it close and open. I think that's a nice feature. Yeah, they're like these nice little like turbine looking things, but the ones on the outside do not control your temperature. It's only the ones in the middle, which are also in a weird position because they're always blowing on your knee or up below for your face kind of thing. And then what do you think of all the materials up here? Surprisingly good. Like everything's pretty soft to the touch and it looks nice. And before we keep talking about the rest of the materials and the seats, let's switch it up, get you in the driver's seat for some cliche corner and then we'll finish everything else off. And some more horsepower and torque. Horsepower and torque. First launch since we're back. Brake boost. Oh. <laughs> and then it really picks up in the upper RPMs. Like you really gotta get above 5,000 and this thing wakes up. So you don't have paddles in this, but what you do have is an upshift, downshift button on the shifter, but only when you're in low gear. Yeah, so I already selected my volume and changed the channel because there are buttons back here. Yes, which I do like because my Prowler has it and pretty much all Chrysler's have it. Oh, he mentioned it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now everyone's probably wondering why we haven't addressed the Blazer thing yet. We'll get to that soon, but first let's talk about this engine. You really do need to drive it to wake it up because in the lower RPMs, it just feels kind of dead and kind of flat. So when you floor it, you gotta wait and then it picks up and then it's kind of good. I don't mind it. And what's funny is there's different modes. You can be in two wheel drive, which is front wheel drive, and then all wheel drive and sport, which is also all wheel drive. And if you floor it in two wheel drive, you get torque steer. Yeah, so it is kind of cool that you can turn off the all wheel drive system and have it in front wheel drive because you will save gas but you do actually get torque steer in front wheel drive when you floor it. And to shift it into all wheel drive is a nightmare. This shift knob for the modes, like it, it's not responsive. Like if I hold it, it goes too far. If I don't put, hold it long enough, it doesn't go. It's, it's the worst. It's genuinely terrible. Like I don't know if it's gonna switch every time I use it. Sometimes it switches with the same amount of hold, sometimes it doesn't. So there are five different modes. You'll be lucky if you find three of them. Yeah, and you have to spend so much time looking at it that it's pretty much a road hazard. But yeah. 
cliche corner time. All right, let's send it in cliche corner, but I'm gonna put it into sport mode. Let's we'll see if it really makes a difference. Probably not. And let's see how this thing handles. Okay, not bad. This does have torque vectoring because we can get that through the all-wheel drive system. So it kind of pushes the outside wheels more than it does the inside. And this handles better than I thought. I think this handles better than I remember the Edge ST handling, but that was a while ago. I feel a good amount of rotation through there, but it, it's you have to like wedge yourself against the whole <laughs> thing just to stay in your seat. Yeah, there's not much bolstering on the seat. There is definitely body roll. This is an SUV, even though it's an RS. RS doesn't really mean much anymore. You kind of need it to be an SS for something or even like a ZL11LE kind of thing, but... It's okay. You know, RS didn't even mean anything in the third gen Camaro. Yeah, I guess Because there was right. still the Z28 and the IROC and then the RS below that. And it stands for Rally Sport, right? Whatever Which that also means. doesn't really mean anything. But to be honest, if you were trying to race someone in a VTEC Honda Odyssey to soccer practice, I think the Odyssey would win. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it would also sound better too. Yeah. <laughs> And steering wise, it's actually surprisingly good. It turns more than I expect it to. When I give it a little bit of input, and when I give it more input, it turns more. So it feels like it's like a variable rack kind of thing. But it is very light steering. It is very light, and and then, especially initially. And then you'll notice if you're in the all wheel drive modes, when you get to the end of a very tight turn, the wheel is really hard to push. But if you're in two wheel drive, it's much easier. Yeah, so it's almost like you're driving a truck in four low or four high. Like you can't make turns at a tight radius. So you do have to kind of turn it back to front wheel drive, which seems weird because other companies have figured out how to do all wheel drive without doing that. Yeah, but that's only like really low speed parking lot stuff and U-turns like on normal roads, you're not going to have that issue. Yeah, because this has a crazy clutch type all wheel drive system. So it's very different than traditional all wheel drive systems, which gives you that kind of torque vectoring stuff. So now let's talk about this transmission. Very slow to downshift, even in sport mode. But it does shift pretty quickly between gears, and it, I'm not going to say it's seamless, but it shifts pretty smoothly as well. There's not really any issues if you don't think this is a fast car. Yeah, it is a 9-speed. That's about it. It's not like a multi-plate clutch system or anything like that. Traditional auto. So with all the performance looks and some of the interior of the way, I would like to talk about the name Blazer. So Blazer used to be a cool SUV that kind of went against the Bronco. Well, it was body on frame. So now there's a Bronco that's actually going to be hardcore and the Blazer's not. Yeah, so the Bronco is coming back as body on frame and there's apparently going to be a Bronco Sport, which probably won't be. So this is kind of competing with the Bronco Sport. So then you think in five years, they're gonna change this to the Chevy Blazer Sport and release the Chevy Blazer Blazer. But there's also the Trail Blazer as well. So I don't even know. This obviously should have been body on frame. It would have been a cool opportunity, but at the same time, they had to name it Blazer so that people would talk about it because if they named it like, you know, something like a Chevy thing, like sundowner or something like that like Sun, i don't know like sundowner people from niagara falls would probably be really uh, excited but everyone else would be like oh sundowner like whatever <laughs> <laughs> but so they, they kind of had to name it the blazer leave, leave a comment below if you've been to sundowners <laughs> in niagara falls <laughs> yeah the blazer name is not really that bad and with the mach e coming they could have done a worse thing than this so whatever yeah but this is basically a camaro suv so let's talk about this interior okay visor test Ooh, let's find out. Three, two, one. Yes! Full pass. Cup holder test. Okay. I've got my insulated water because I've been home all the time drinking water and not drinking coffees and sodas. So yeah, yeah. it fits just fine. Trying to avoid drive throughs So starting off with these seats, I think they're pretty comfortable, but like we said earlier, not too bolstered. I don't have any issues with these seats. I feel fine. But my favorite part is while driving at my height, I've got an elbow on the armrest in the middle. I've got an elbow on the armrest on the door and I can touch the steering wheel perfectly fine. It's one of the most comfortable driving positions for just cruising straight. But what sucks is this doesn't have good lane keep just lane departure yeah so that would have been nice to add but i mean kind of at this price it really should have it i mean the hyundai would have it yeah it would but the only gripe i have with the driving position is that my left elbow on the door it's kind of hard there it would have been nice if it's as soft as the one in the middle i'm thinking road trips and stuff like that yeah yo you know on my honda element it is like the old guy who used to have it broke it down so much i think he broke the plastic and there's like a full ditch where your <laughs> left arm elbow goes well that makes sense and what's also cool about these seats is instead of having beeping when you're reversing, it'll vibrate your notifications through your seat. So you never really need to worry about like the beeping being annoying for other passengers and stuff. It's just a kind of uncomfortable feeling. Like if you've ever had like a Dr. Hose thing hooked up to your yeah. butt for some reason at like a really low thing, that's kind of what it feels like. What's weird is when you're on an angle reversing and like looking behind you, not all your butt is on the seat and the vibrating like really throws you off at the beginning. But 
I like it. And moving on to the back seats, there's actually really good knee room and headroom for someone six foot one and a half. Yeah, and when the seats are up, there's a ton of room behind that, which is good because it's not like a really compact SUV or anything. And when you fold everything down, the bottom cushions of the back seat kind of moves forward, so you get a really nice flat load floor without doing anything weird like the Focus ST. We had to like pop up a cushion, fold it over, and stuff like that. Yeah, like certain cars, you have to remove headrests and do weird stuff like that. This, nah, this is just flat. And we've got this really cool moonroof. Yeah, it's huge. And instead of gloss black, what's nice is we've got this gray, which is almost black with a lot of flakes in it. Yeah, which I believe Toyota also does, so I fully approve of this removal of gloss black. And there's not too much cheap looking chrome in here. There's definitely a little bit, but it's all kind of the satin chrome. Yeah, which I don't know if it's going to be in the baser trims or it's just like straight up blinding chrome. Probably. Then we also got one of these. Oh yeah, when you get out of the car, the reverse lights stay on. And I assume that's where we kick to open. Okay, with all the interior stuff, exterior stuff, driving out of the way, let's get to the price. This starts at $46,298. Canadian. And this one is optioned out to $53,868. That's kind of a lot for a Blazer. It kind of is, but this is pretty much the top trim, pretty much fully loaded. Yeah, I just don't know if I, I put that much value into what I'm getting here. Cause like I'm missing the cool lane keep stuff. Sure, I've got a good infotainment and everything, but like this doesn't have a head-up display. There's just a lot of stuff I feel like everyone else has that this doesn't. We already listed the competitors earlier, but I'm gonna throw two curveballs at you because of the price. The Hyundai Palisade, which starts at $38,000, and the Kia Telluride, which starts at $44,000, are both cheaper than this and they're through row. Man, yeah. I, I really like those and they didn't feel as big as they were. Yeah, so I would personally pick those, even though they're out of class, and I would just leave the back seats folded down all the time and be able to store whatever I wanted back there. And then what if you had to go this against the Edge ST? So go full America, because I would personally go Edge ST because I liked the more power, I liked the lane keep because it was really good, and style-wise, I honestly think a blue Edge ST looks a little bit better than this. The Edge ST is the worst car I remember driving in the last year or two, so I'm definitely going with this. But looks wise, I do kind of like it, but I think this just looks aggressive enough, Camaro enough that I'm still gonna choose this on looks and just generally everything. Minus the performance, because the Edge ST straight line is faster, but that transmission is so annoying and the driving position is so bad that I'm still team Blazer. So let us know in the comments below, would you take the Blazer RS, any other Blazer, the Edge ST, or one of its competitors? And click on this playlist right here, which will probably be SUVs. Edge ST, come on, Edge ST. Yeah, I guess so. That's damn transmission. <laughs>